we were inspired every day just to write music and to uh, participate and the experience the experience was like almost a miraculous thing it's hard to even describe it even today that it was so uh, productive and so positive you all had been musicians for years before branching out songwriters and the like you had some good tutelage mm -hmm. uh, by some gentlemen who had like yourselves were very prolific in the industry tell me a little bit about that uh... well gambling Huff basically um, you know i met Huff in, at the uh, schubert theater and we had worked with different people earlier and we really didn't get too much help, Ed, you know, when, in, in the early days from, uh, when you say tutelage, where people taught us how to do what we're doing. Uh, it was not really an open kind of uh, business in Philadelphia where people actually took guys like Gambling Hoff and showed us the industry. We really had to work hard to find mm -hmm. out how the industry really worked. See, but I was a musician first mm -hmm. before writing songs. I've been playing keyboards since I was like six years old. And it really developed as I just kept playing. I played in schools, elementary school, junior high school, drums. So I was always a part of the music program. Had it, has, it ever, has there ever been a time when, when we think of the 70s, and you think about all the great music the OJs had, Teddy Pendergrass, Patti LaBelle, uh, the latter hits of, of Phyllis Hyman, you guys brought Jerry Butler back alive, you know, mm -hmm. put ice to the Iceman once again, mm -hmm. Lou Rawls, Billy Paul, the Jacksons when they switched over. I mean, we can go on and on and on, Gene Carn. Mm -hmm. Gamble and Huff, though, was so prolific that at least the name was as well known as any of these cats at, at that time. Did you know then that, you know, we're doing, we're doing something when you become like Lennon McCartney and, and, and at that point you're not even up front like they are? That's true. Well, I think that Gamble and Huff, we were two uh, prolific writers because we tailor-made songs for the artists. We concentrated on them daily to write songs. Most of the songs that we did with the artists were written especially for those artists. In addition to that, we also had a lot of other great writers that uh, we were able to open the doors for, like McFadden and Whitehead, Bunny Sigler, Tom Bell, Lim Creed, uh, Sherman Marshall. So we had a good team. And I think between the songwriters and the producers and the musicians and studios, we had a great combination. You, you talk about some of the songs. Uh, if you don't know by now, 992 arguments, backstabbers, only the strong survive. I, I don't even like to start the list because you leave out so many <laughs> yeah. great songs. Yeah. But is there a song that, and I'll, we'll get into after this commercial break, the idea of the message which carried black America through the 70s when, when we really needed that message. Mm -hmm. um, but is there a song that, in your opinion, typifies what Gamble and Huff was trying to do at that time? What do you think? Man, there's so many of them. So you know, it's, uh, it's like asking, you know, what's your favorite one? You yeah. know, uh, <sighs> though most uh, parents don't admit it, they got a favorite kid. I tell you what, I'll, I'll put you off the spot for a second. I'll, I'll yeah, take a break. Yeah, I'll yeah, let yeah, you. I'll give them yeah. two minutes to think about that, think and we'll have more with Gambling Huff. Plus, we'll be joined by Black Thought of the group, The Roots, right after this. Back in a minute. one of the great covers of the glory years of TSOP. That's the OJs and Ship Ahoy. They're the men who brought you that sound, Gamble and Huff. I'm going to keep them off the hook a little bit when they're looking for that one song that typifies what they were doing, but we're uh, going to get back to that. I won't let them go home before they answer it. Joining us now, another man who makes music from the town of Philly, Tariq Trotter, better known as Black Thought of the Grammy-winning group The Roots. Brother, thank you. Appreciate it. Let me ask you, 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 you're a musician, you're from Philly. When you think about these guys and all of what they've done and, and putting Philly on the map and the like, and you still hear the influences of today, do you, do you marvel at how prolific they've been? Um, yeah, I do, actually, yes, definitely. You know, um, it's an honor to be, you know, here with them and even, you know, considered to, to represent Philadelphia alongside, you know, such great composers, musicians, producers, definitely. How much of that music meant things to young people like yourself growing up in Philly and, and listening? I mean, we've got a, a, a new TSOP, if you will, with Jill Scott and Music Soul Child and all the great people coming out of Philly. But how much of that meant something? There's a certain pride you take in knowing that these cats are from your city as well. Definitely. Um, 
when I was growing up, you know, I wasn't really aware that it was the sound of Philadelphia per se, as much as I was aware uh, that it was kind of just, you know, the sound of grown people. It was just grown people music, <laughs> you know what I mean, people. to me. It was the music that they listening to in the other room yeah. that you might get to catch if grandpa was driving you home on a late uh -huh. night, you know, but uh, yeah, um, as, as, as I got older and became kind of more aware of uh, you know, pr production and, and who's putting the music out, and uh, I realized, wow, these guys are from Philly, and that artist from Philly too, yeah. and they recorded this song where, you know, um, yeah, it's definitely a, a prize. He brings up an interesting point, and, and he talks about it being grown people music at that time, but it really was something mm -hmm. of the time. You mentioned orchestration, that it really was for grown-ups first, in, in, in the sense of it was music that could be appreciated. Was that, was that mm -hmm. conscious on your part? I think it was music for that generation and for that mm -hmm. time, and uh, you know, at that particular time, we were we were his age, you know what I mean? Right. So, I mean, you're talking about 30, you're talking about 67, 68, I mean, so you're talking about a long time ago uh, in reference to music, and I think that each generation has its own music, mm -hmm. and I think that we just happen to be blessed enough to be able to be a part of that era's music. Leon, what, pick up on that point, and also tell me about the idea of being able to spot talent, because one of, one of your biggest stars in the stable was Teddy Pendergrass, and what a lot of people don't know is they knew he sang for Harold Melvin and the Blue right. Notes, but they did not know that initially Teddy was the drummer for yes. that group. Yes. Yeah. See, the, 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 the songs today is so relevant because of the, the song content, the, the song. A lot of our songs was written about social issues that they still talk about today, uh, relationships that still talk about today. And one song is so popular today, I think we'll never go out of style as backstabbers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that message, it will be popular the, the next three generations. The, it's the lyrics, it's the, it's the, it's the lyrics, you know, the, the, uh, the stories that, that everybody relate to, you know, and Teddy, Teddy's voice, just stuck out to me when, when we used to rehearse them. And um, I used to say, Gamma, listen to that baritone voice in the background. It was just roared out over mm. everything, you know. And I took notice of it really, really quick. When you talk about the message, uh, Eddie laughed about it when we had him here. I was telling you guys he was on a few weeks ago. And Eddie Levert of the OJ said, man, at first we didn't want to do no message that's song. We, wanted to, yeah, we wanted to do what was that's kicking, right. you know, living that's for the weekend and that's things right. like that. But that's yeah. really what put them on the map. Yeah. Does this speak to, and I know and we'll get into what you guys do for Philly, but does this speak to Gamble and Huff in the sense of wanting to make social statements as well? Yeah, we wanted to make a social statement, you know, and... Uh, I can remember Eddie saying to me, he said, well, we don't want to do any more messages, so we don't want to do it. But that, that was part of what we felt. And writing songs is like, you give him part of your soul, you give him your heart. And so we did a lot of love songs, but we also too made a lot of songs that were, were things that we saw in the community and we wanted to write about them. And the OJs were one of the best carriers for that message. You all, your generation, some of it, and they get they get beat up, and I have the brothers on here, as you know, the ones that get beat up in the dust. But you and others really do follow in that tradition in making sure that there is a message in much of your music. Mm -hmm. How much of that uh, do you do you think was surrounded because of what these gentlemen did in the town of Philadelphia? Just as you said, by osmosis, you hear it and hear it and hear it. Um, I mean, I feel like like these like the the work ethic of Gamble and Huff. Uh, you know, kind of set the precedent for, you know, all the other musicians to come from Philadelphia since. You know what I mean? So um, it was definitely a conscious effort, us coming out as the roots, um, for one, to have music that was uh, considered music by music lovers, you know what I mean? And considered hip hop by hip hop music lovers. And, uh, you know, that's why we implemented the live instrumentation. The idea uh, of, of, of storytelling, too. That's big. I, I, I was uh, talking with a couple of folks who we had on, and I say some people in their songs sing a song, and others, Nancy Wilson, who I know you all have worked with, is one right, of the most yeah. gifted in terms of telling a story, mm -hmm. a story. through her song. Right. Uh, that was also a big uh, part of what you guys did. Yeah, it was interpretation. Say, for example, uh, like the album that you had with uh, the OJ, Ship Ahoy. Now, this is a story, and uh, that, 
you know, that, that was not a single that came out, but it was a concept. Our albums basically had concepts, you know, with Ship Ahoy, um, uh, For the Love of Money was involved in that because we all know that slavery was, mm -hmm. was business. And so it was a concept about the African middle passage, in other words. Did you go find men like Billy Paul, for instance, who could interpret a story? Me and Mrs. Jones, I understand, is going to make its way uh, as a play. Right. He had, uh, you know, Let's Make a Baby and all of the great songs uh, of that songs, time. Oh, man, I'm telling you, I'm songs. telling you. But it started, you know, it started, see, Gamble was a recording artist himself, and Gamble can sing. See, yeah. see, yeah. see, yeah. see yeah. this is how what the connection is. Mm. See, I, I'm a piano player, you know, and I, when I left the Camden, I thought I could play pretty good. I was ready to compete. So when I met Gamble, he could sing. He was in a band. And mm. Gamble had lines around the corners mm. and didn't even have a record out. <laughs> so the band that he was in, I had to get in that band. So, and then the, the band, I mean, we played, we toured everywhere. I mean, we just played everywhere. We did all the college circuits. We were just that good. Mm -hmm. So when we were in a room writing songs, I would be, I would, I'd be loving the way Gam would be singing, and he'd be loving the way I'd be tickling uh -huh. them keyboards, so it was like a show. Yeah, we motivated each other. How, how many songs could you kick out in a day? Oh, boy, I, I can remember that me and Huff could write and complete. Now, it's one thing to write a song, right. but it's another thing to complete it. Um, I, I, I've seen me and Huff complete maybe like 10 songs in one day. Wow. Yes. When we were at like our peak, yes. you know. Wow. But maybe yes. write. And with concepts and ideas, maybe 15 or 20, but when you yes. can really complete them is the thing. All right, gentlemen, hold on. We've got to pay some bills. We'll take another quick break. When we, can turn, when we return, I should say, we'll uh, talk about their affiliation with the Jacksons. King of Pop stole some stuff from these folks, too. We'll be back in just a minute. Continuing to talk about the sound of Philadelphia with the men who created it, Gamble and Huff and Black Thought from the Roots, current sound of Philadelphia. Uh, let me, and we're going to get into community and what you guys have done, uh, hence with, with Philadelphia, a lot going on there, uh, and you've not forgotten it. But I want to go back to something we were talking about uh, during the commercial and that's the idea of the vessel and picking the right people you had such a huge huge stable and 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 later you 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 got the jacksons and had to to some degree redefine their sound keeping it enough where the fans would still embrace them and that was coming out of the whole fight and leaving motown but giving them something new and fresh w what did you do with them well, the Jacksons, I think they were in a transition period when they came with us. Like Jermaine had left the group and it was a lot of turmoil. Uh, and plus they were growing older. They were, they were not little kids anymore. Mm -hmm. I think what we did with the Jacksons was we developed a good relationship with them. And I think uh, we, we listened to them a lot. And Michael Jackson in particular, that he had a good concept of how he wanted to sound. And um, Huff and myself, we wrote songs that we felt that would be tailor-made for them like enjoy yourself and let me show you the way to go and there's a couple other good songs and I think about the good times and things like that that we thought were uh, songs that the Jacksons could execute well and I think uh, I think we did pretty good with them who's an unsung hero in your mind somebody that recorded for you that maybe had a couple of hits but didn't get the recognition that you think they deserve hmm. recognition Unsung hero. Hey, I, I, right off the top of my head would be Bunny Sigler. Bunny Sigler. We said the same person. <laughs> Bunny Sigler uh, was such a talented person. You know, he's one of the, the guys that we all worked with. Mm -hmm. and, and he wrote some of the great songs for the OJs, like Let Me Make Love to You. And, uh, and Bunny is an excellent singer himself, but I think that his talents were, were diverse. And I think he was just as good of a writer as he was a singer. So he, he would be an unsung hero. Tariq, what, what's your thought of the difference as best you can tell and maybe it's a better question suited to them but I'm, I'm curious what a young person thinks about when, when when you look at the music scene today and when they were coming up um I think one of the primary differences is uh, the tools of the trade you know have changed uh, from live instrumentation to something more you know the technology is changing every year mm -hmm. with regards to how you can put your music together and um you know uh there are pros and cons to that you know but uh it's definitely two separate animals the whole uh electronic music as opposed to 
you know, acoustic or, you know, just as opposed to live. One of the things that we, we mentioned you guys were very big on, and, and you did a concept album, Clean Up the Ghetto, around it, where you brought all of your stable together to talk about it. That remained constant for you in that you all have done so much with the city of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about some of the pet projects. Well, um, Clean Up the Ghetto was an album that we did with the Philly International All-Stars, and uh, it became a program, a national program, where people were more conscious about their, their neighborhoods. Uh, during that time, we were thinking about the neighborhoods, and so even till today, we're involved in uh, community development. We're involved in, uh, we have a company called Universal Companies in Philadelphia, which is involved in education and economic development, creating opportunities and trying to improve educational uh, um, choices for people in in South Philadelphia, it's really in South Philadelphia, and we're creating a model, a community that has a comprehensive approach to community development. All right, let me, let me take a quick break and we'll follow up. I'm going to get that uh, song that typifies them as well. Also, these uh, gentlemen did the Soul Train theme, if you didn't know. All right, back in a minute. Watch what a star power gets you. I'd like a whopper, please, but make it a chicken whopper. You got it. See what I'm saying? Chicken whopper. You got it. Introducing the new chicken whopper sandwich only at Burger King. What you love about the original whopper, but with a flame broiled chicken breast filet. There's even a chicken whopper junior. Mr. Harvey? Yeah, what can I do for you? You're blocking the napkins. Come in now and ask for 50 cents off your chicken whopper. At We're back. I was sharing a little secret about Nancy Wilson that I probably can't share on the air, but uh, when she comes in a few weeks, I'll tell you about it. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, we should also note, uh, for those of you who are intrigued, there is a new box set out. Uh, I advise you to go pick it up, and you can always go get the albums because they're out there too, but uh, the new box set with a compilation called The Philly Sound, Gamble and uh, Huff, the story behind Brotherly Love 66 through 76 is out there. I would uh, encourage you to go get it. You also had a great band. MFSB, which provided much of the music and the sound for what we know as the Philadelphia. Started out as a band, mm -hmm. but it really was an and, orchestra. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And MFSB stands for Mother, Father, Sister, Brother. So it was always like a family concept that we were trying to, to project. Some of the greatest musicians from all different ethnic backgrounds that worked together and, uh, and made sure that the music had the quality that we wanted. So. Do you hope to aspire to be able to, to do, I would imagine, with your music, what they have done with theirs? Definitely. Definitely. Um, that's, that's one of the goals of The Roots, you know, uh, kind of trying to develop artists as we go along and develop musicians and, uh, you know, just hone our craft. You feel me? Uh, so that, you know, we can have the sort of longevity of, of a gambling huff. You know, uh, we're fairly new to the game, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, I hope, I hope we're, we're as blessed. Yeah. yeah. Now, gentlemen, I got about a minute. Mm -hmm. I, I did not go to asking you your favorite artist, because I know that'll get you in trouble. But, right. but is there a song, as you think about it, that is either a favorite or one, if you were to say in a time capsule, put this one in and they'll know what we were trying to do? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Um. Whenever I hear You Never Find Another Love Like Mine by Lou mm -hmm, Ross, mm -hmm. I listened to the, the track and the, and the orchestration and the way it was put together was uh, really... Well, what about For the Love of Money? Yeah, well, what yeah. about uh, Backstabbers? <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, and it goes uh, on and on. And, and, that, and, and that is yeah. the sign of the idea of how prolific you all yeah. are. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. I thank you so much for joining you, us. Very I greatly appreciate, appreciate it. Being here. Black Thought? Okay. Tariq, as your mama call you, uh, yes, I sir. thank you, my brother, for uh, coming in. Thank you for And you keep me. doing your thing, too. Oh, definitely. All right. And thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. You can go to BET.com and find out more about our show and anything on BET. For all of us at BET Tonight, I'm Ed Gordon. We'll see you again. Good night.